And we'd like to welcome in here on O's Extra, Xavier Avery and LJ Hose from the Frederick Keys. And folks, two of the top prospects in the Orioles organization, only their third year in the Orioles system and already in high A ball in the Carolina League. And uh, Xavier, let, let's start with that, the, the fact that the organization really uh, has looked at you two guys and realized, you know, these are two guys we want to grow, we want to challenge. Uh, what does that mean to you as a player when they say, we think you can handle this, go out and show us? Um, well, me personally, I love a challenge, you know. So I, I like the fact that they're doing that and pushing us to be better. You know, so I'm taking it, and I'm going <laughs> to run with it. <laughs> <laughs> LJ, first of all, i got to ask you, I know that I looked in the book, and I said your first name is really Jerome O'Brien. Obviously, I knew you were Irish because I'm Irish, I could tell. I could tell it. What's the L stand for? Uh, little Jerome, my dad. Little, little Jerome. Jerome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, me and my uh, me and my dad are the same name. Uh, uh, fortunately, I have a different middle name than him. He has his middle name is Eguster. Mine is O'Brien. So my mother said she put a stop to the Eguster. So they named me after. Uh, actually, my uncle uh, he passed away. His name is his middle name was O'Brien. So they gave me that middle name. Oh, cool. You know, um, you went in the third round for the Orioles, but there really was a chance you could have gone a little bit higher, maybe first or second round. Any regrets? Because I know that you had a commitment to North Carolina at one time. Was there any regrets about that? Um, at all? I know that a lot of a lot of the scouts were were shied away that I had a commitment to North Carolina because a lot of them thought I had a very strong commitment to North Carolina. So, I think that uh, I mean it's a win-win situation. You know, um, North Carolina's a great school. Uh, playing for the hometown team, play, growing up watching the Orioles. I mean, I grew up an Orioles fan, so growing up, I mean it was a win-win situation. I mean, the Orioles are always the team I want to play for or get drafted by them. So. I think that I couldn't go wrong with the decision that I made. You know, you guys, uh, actually, Joe Jordan made a decision a couple of years ago, the Orioles scouting director, to, to increase the athleticism of the players in the system. And, and I know, Xavier, uh, you could have gone to the University of Georgia to play football, uh, so a two-sport uh, option there. Uh, but the fact that you're able to take your athletic talents and then blend them in baseball, I would think it's an easier transition, although they're, they're two entirely different games. Maybe instinct takes over more on the football field, but here the subtleties are what you have to learn um yes I think that's true you know because with me personally I think I have to slow down a little bit on the baseball field you know I'm very fast on the field you know but as far as like stealing bases you know I have to take my time and you know study the pitches more you know instead of just getting out there and going you know like I would on the football field you know LJ you uh, you know back in high school actually you were a pitcher and an outfielder yes. and all of a sudden you end up at second base so what does that feel like uh, it's been an adjustment. It's been like a big adjustment, but uh, I, I like it a lot. I mean, I played infield growing up until I got to high school. Then my um, high school coach, I, I would help the team more in the outfield, so I, I was open to moving to the outfield, started playing the outfield, started pitching a little bit. So it's a good play getting back in the infield. I enjoy it a lot. It's a lot of hard work. I mean, it's different than high school where guys had to slide into the base now. Guys can slide out of the baseline and try to take you out. So main thing is just staying in there and having confidence and turning a double play. That's the, the main thing I struggled with I at first. That's what I want to ask you about, the double <laughs> yeah. play. I mean, has it really been an adjustment because now you got your back to the runner? You've never had that before. Yeah, it's definitely been an adjustment. I remember last year I struggled with it. And this year, um, before I went into camp, I mean, the guys talked to me like, Brian Graham, um, uh, um, Denny Hawking, um, uh, Bobby Dickerson. I mean, all those guys were there were just telling me to stay in there. I mean, just t stay in there and just say, turn it up and play. I mean, the guys hit you, it's going to hurt for a little bit. You'll be fine. You know, it's interesting, the backgrounds of these two guys, uh, Xavier Avery from the state of Georgia, and you played as an amateur with Jason Hayward, who all he's doing at 20 years old made the all-star team for the Atlanta Braves. But what was that like knowing uh, that you were an equal to his and you see what he's doing? And that has to inspire you to work harder uh, to try to move along the chain quicker. Um, yes, you know, I always look at those guys. You know, he's a friend of mine. You know, we work out together in the offseason, you know. Me seeing him in the big leagues and making our star team, that's motivation towards me, you know, so I always want to compare myself, you know, and I see him, I want to do the same thing because I feel like I can play on the level that he's on. You know, both you guys are drafted at the same time. You both went to the same two leagues together at the same time. Do you guys ever often sit around and talk with each other about how you're going to come to the big leagues together and play for the Orioles? Uh, oh, you want to go first? <laughs> no, go ahead, LJ. Go All of a sudden, they're shy. Oh, no, nah, no, nah, I'm not shy. You know, we have talked about it, you know, a lot of times. You know, it's no secret. Um, you know, we sit around, we 
we talk about, you know, we want to make it together, you know. We got drafted, we're doing everything together, so of course we're going to sit around and talk about Who's it. Who's going to push Adam Jones out? <laughs> <laughs> hey, or no. Brian Roberts. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely have. I mean, coming in GCL together, we, uh, we're roommates down there, uh, so those, those long, hot days when we're done early at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, we're sitting, we're sitting around. Watch games, watch movies, and talk about it, how cool but would it be. And then, I mean, in the off season, we uh, actually uh, work out a lot together. We actually work out together with Jason and all those guys. So, I mean, it's, it's a tremendous thing to have someone that I'm close to that that I'm, he's looking out for me. I'm looking out for him that we can grow and develop with, and hopefully make it to the big leagues together. You know, and Rick makes a real good point about your rapid rise through the system because you're drafted in 08. They send you to the Gulf Coast League. You get your feet wet. They skip two levels, Bluefield and Aberdeen. They, they just skip them. All of a sudden, you go to the Marvel, you get a full year in there, and now at the age of 20, you're in the Carolina League and playing very well for Frederick. What about your your approaches at the plate? Because there, there's guys 23. I mean, your new teammate uh, Moreau, who pitched a no hitter, he's a 23 year old college kid on your team. Obviously, there's some experience in that league. What about your approach at the plate, learning a, against harder competition? Well, you know, I, like I said, I'm a very smart guy. You know, I catch on to a lot of things very quickly. Um, you know. We learned a lot in Del Marvel last year, me and LJ. You know, I struggled my first one in April in Del Marvel. You know, I was hitting around 120, you know. First month, you know, I was like, God, this is real hard for me, you know, but that's what made it. It's real hard, you know. But I loved the fact that it was hard because, you know, I love a challenge, you know. But I came out of the next month, I had to hit like 400, 500, you know, to get out of the slump, you know, and I end up. Getting the 310, you know, after all that that happened, and I, it worked out for him. You know, I learned and I got better. You know, I adapted to it. <laughs> how, how about you, LJ? Same thing? Yeah, same thing. I mean, pretty much this. Uh, my high school coach was really good, so we we uh, went over like we had scouting reports and stuff in high school. It came from a pretty good high school program, so I had developed approach uh, in high school that I took to. The first league at Gulf Coast League, but then that first full season was just guys that were coming out of college, guys that were good pitchers. I mean, you know, I spot up they with their fastballs and throw change ups and curveballs and different counts. I mean, it's just like getting used to not sitting on one pitch and being able to read and react instead of sitting on one pitch and like you could in high school. I mean, guys get down too well, they'll throw you a fastball. Now they're getting down too well, they'll throw you a change up or a slider or something like that. So just getting accustomed to reading pitches and having approach of not knowing what you want to do in a different situation when you come to, to hit. All right, quickly, if uh, John Stockstill calls right now and says, oh, by the way, guys, you're going to Bowie, you ready for that challenge, the next step? I'm always ready. <laughs> yeah, I'm always ready. Yeah. He doesn't lack confidence. That's what I like hey, about Somebody you better get Adam Jones on the phone. There's a guy down here in the end that wants his job. And Brian Roberts, hey, B-Rob, you better get back here pretty quick. LJ's coming along. Well, guys, uh, we appreciate you coming. It's great to uh, be able to talk with you. Rick and I have been following you all year. And uh, what we really appreciate uh, we like how things are being run in the minor league system this year. John Stock still, without a doubt, and everyone uh, who works in the minor leagues pushing the players and offering you challenges. And it's nice to see you guys grasping that. And, and because ultimately, it's all about playing in the major leagues, and we know that. So hopefully, someday before too long, we'll see you there. Thanks and for there's coming. There's nobody in. that keeps up you more than this guy right here. <laughs> he is on everybody down there. Thank you for having us. Well, yeah, we appreciate it. Us. 92 <laughs> base hits, eh? closing in on 100. I'm going to call Marcakis, another guy. I never <laughs> thought about hitting that linebacker after he was hitting a buck 50. There.